you, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ryan. Right. Change is coming as we speak. You've seen the speakers speak about change today. Now for the past 20, 30 years, every time Singaporeans ask questions, we ask the government to let us know what they are doing with our CPF. But the government will tell us that it is not in our personal interest to know. They will tell us that it is not in the national interest to know. Who is the nation? Are they the nation or are we the nation? We are the nation. Now for the past 20, 30 years, the CPF became lesser and lesser. The 2.5% interest rate grew slower than inflation. The interest rates on our CPF became lower and lower. But the CPF minimum sum kept going higher and higher. In some years, it went above 10%. Now the government says that they want to increase the CPF minimum sum because of inflation. But why is it that the CPF minimum sum grew by more than 10% when inflation is only 2-3%? to 3%? Today, we still don't have answers. The government says the CPF minimum sum is good for us. But when we are not even safe enough in our CPF to meet the CPF minimum sum, what is so good about the CPF minimum sum? Yes, now Singaporeans have been asking the government to let us know the truth for many years, many decades now. The government has always never wanted to answer. The government has never wanted to tell us the truth. But over the past two months, suddenly everything changed. Why did things suddenly change from May this year? What happened in May this year? Because of rain! Now in 2012 and 2013, I found evidence on the government websites which proved that our CPF is invested in the GIC and the Masek Holdings. By May this year, the government erased this information on their websites. By May this year, the GIC still do not tell us that they are investing our CPF. They told us that they do not know if they are doing so. By May this year, Singaporeans still do not know if GIC and Tomasin Holdings use our CPF to invest because they did not want to tell us the truth. By May this year, Singaporeans knew nothing about how our CPF is being managed by the government. Then all of a sudden, in June this year, for the very first time in history, the government admitted the truth that our CPF is invested in the GIC. No, the government did not come out and say, I'm sorry, this is the truth. They just publish pictures in the straight sites. They share photos on their Facebook on the truth about the CPF and how it is being invested in the GIC. Why did not why did they not say sorry to us? Now in June this year, the GIC, first the government admitted, now the GIC also admitted that they invest our CPF. And in June this year, for the first time, the massive holdings said that they do not invest our CPF. But is this the truth? An ex-director from the Ministry of Finance wrote a book and she revealed that since the 1970s, our CPF was invested in the Tomasek Holdings. So how come the Tomasek Holdings suddenly in June this year said that they stopped using our CPF? When did they stop using our CPF? May this year? They were set up since 1974. That is 40 years. Have they been using our CPF for 40 years before June this year? Now remember, Tomasek Holdings earn high interest and GIC earn lower interest. 
So why did our CPF suddenly got invested in the GIC and not the Marseille Holdings? Suddenly in June this year, the government admitted to many truths. From not wanting to let Singaporeans know at all, now they bow down to our pressure. Yeah. Yeah, In June this year, they admitted the truth. In June this year, I lost my job. Now, but why did the government take so long to tell us the truth? Why did the GIC keep pretending that they do not know whether they are using our CPF? Why did the government treat us like fools? The government knew since 1980s that the CPF was invested in the GIC and the Marseille Holdings. Why did the government treat us like fools? We have to push for 30 years. We have to push for 30 years for the truth to finally come out. How many of us have lost our lives in the past 30 years? Now, how many of us have died fighting for answers? Now, how many Singaporeans have to beg the government for answers? And finally, in June this year, for the very first time, the government admitted the truth. It took them 30 years to admit the truth. Six big percent of the Tomasek holdings, 
and they give us 2.5%. The CPM is not a cheap source of funding. Our CPM is very cheap. <laughs> Who in their right mind would give someone else their money except only 2.5% and then tell them you can take my money and earn 16%? Will you do that? Yeah. Now we should take our money back, money back and tell them you cannot touch our money until we give you the permission to do so. Right. Right. But will they let us? No. Now will they let us? No. The government tells us that 2.5% is fair. They say that GIC take on the risk for Singaporeans and give us a secure interest rate. Now, is this true? No! It is Singaporeans who are taking on the risk for the GIC. We keep working so hard. We keep earning CPF. <coughs> now, without our CPF, the GIC and Tomasek Holdings will not have this money to use. Yes! <coughs> now, it is Singaporeans who are taking on the risk. Without the CPF, the GIC and the Tamase Holdings will amount to very little. If the GIC... Now, if the GIC and Tamase Holdings need money, the government will give them more money. They call it capital injections. But where does the money come from? If Singaporeans need the money to be returned to our CPF, will the government give us more money? No. no. Now they pay us 2.5 to 4 percent. They happily take our money to invest. If we do not take on the low interest rate, will they have the money to invest? No. Mr. Chiam Si Pong also said, imagine your uncle asks you to save and invest 36 percent of your income through him, now 37. He gets a return of 4 percent and gives you 2.5% of it. The excess returns are kept by him. He also tells you, you have no choice because only he knows how to take care of you. Then is he really taking care of you or is he still taking care of himself? Now the government says that the GIC is taking on the risk for Singaporeans but it is true that the Singaporeans are taking on the risk for the GIC. So GIC earns more and more money while Singaporeans earn less and less on our CPF. Now if indeed GIC and Tomasek Holdings have been taking our CPF to invest over the past three to four decades, it is time the government comes true, comes clean with Singaporeans. One, how much did the government use our CPF to invest in the GIC and Tomasek Holdings? Two, how much of the returns that they earn in the GIC and Tomasek Holdings that were not returned? Three, how much tens and thousands of billions of dollars were earned by GIC and Tomasek Holdings that were not returned? Four, these returns have to be returned back to Singaporeans. Yeah. 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 Now, we're going to ask the GIC and Tomasek Holdings to ask them some questions. 一你到底从我们的公积金拿了多少投资在 But you know what? Actually, the government should reward Singaporeans for giving them our CPF to invest. First, the government never asked if they could take our CPF to invest. Then, the government take our CPF and say they have the right to use it. Finally, they tell us they should keep the interest earned and give us a little back. But what about Singaporeans? Have we ever given them permission to use our CPF? Yeah. No! Now, if the government takes our CPF to invest, they should be rewarding us. We shouldn't be rewarding them. That's right, that's right. Now, we are not beggars. 
asking for bits and pieces of help from the government. We have dignity. But the CPF is our money. If you want to use our money, you jolly well pay for it. Now the government's allegiance should be to Singaporeans. We voted for the government to protect us, to take care of Singaporeans first. Now we did not vote for the government to take care of the GIC and the Tamasic Holdings first. Now is the government more interested in taking care of the GIC because they are also on the board of the GIC? Yeah. Now if the government doesn't know, if the government knows not to bite the hand that feeds it, then the government jolly well know that without Singaporeans, without all of us, they wouldn't even have the money to use. Now they can act like princess now because of our money. So let's they forget, we are the masters. And let's we forget. We are the masters! Yes! So if they want to use our CPL to invest, they better pay us good money for it! Yes! If they want to use our CPL to invest, ask us nicely, and we will decide if we want to let them use our CPL to invest. Yes. Now the CPF is our money. Why did they become the money lender instead of us? Why did they become the money lender and threaten us with our money? When it is our money. Now the president of Singapore is supposed to take care of our CPF. Today, what has he said about the CPF? Nothing! Has the President Tony Tan helped Singaporeans ask any hard questions? No! No! no. What is the government doing with our CPF? Does Tony Tan know these answers? No! Does he know these answers when he was the Deputy Prime Minister of the government? Does he know these answers when he was the deputy chairman of the GIC. Yes. As the president of Singapore today, has he asked his questions? No. 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 Yes. The real police please stand up. The Singapore president, he should be taking care of the people's But until now, he has six. For the sake of us, he asked the people's safety. Now in 2011, Parliament reviewed that the median CPFI payout every month is only $260 every month that we can take from our CPF. This means that more than 50% of Singaporeans can take less than $260 every month. Last week, for the first time ever again in our history, for the first time, the government admitted more truths. After hiding for so long, the government finally revealed the truth. Today, we know that as many as 85% of all Singaporeans cannot meet the CPF minimum sum. Now the government says the minimum sum will let Singaporeans take out $1,200 every month. But when 85% of Singaporeans are not even able to take out 
What is the use of the CPM minimum sum? In fact, in fact, 50% of Singaporeans might not even have 60,000 in our CPF. If so, we won't even be able to take out $500 every month. Now, Tom Fuko Men Suo, how much of a CPF minimum sum? Because in Singapore, we can take out every month. But in fact, 85% of Singaporeans, the average is not able to take out this amount. We can't take out every month. In fact, 五十八千的新加坡人，连六万都没有，在公积金都没有，所以我们连六百块都拿不出来。如果我们拿不出这个钱，这个 CPF 没得往上，哪来做梦的？我们现在拿不出来，我们现在拿不出来。我们现在拿不出来。Knowing full well that the wages that they are paying now, knowing full well that the CPF interest rates they are paying now will never, never allow us to meet the CPF minimum sum. <laughs> Is the government planning so bad? Or does the Singapore government does not care about Singaporeans? Now the government told us that the CPF rates are far higher than the equivalent rates provided by similar products held in the market today. Now that I don't have a job, I will invest my CPF and see if this is true. I can share my investment history every month. Now I know someone who invested her ordinary account in early March and has made a profit of about 3% on about 40% of the portfolio only after four months. This means that she has already got a partial return of 3%. And this is still higher than the 2.5% that the government is giving us. How much will she get in a year? 9%? 9% is way higher than 2.5% or even 4%. So let's see if what the government wants us to believe is truly right. Is 2.5% really higher than other similar products? Now, for the first time ever, <coughs> the government finally reveals that Singaporeans have to spend half of our CPF on housing. The CPF is our retirement fund. It is not a housing fund. Now why did the government make us pay half of our CPF for the flats? That tell us to pledge half to pledge our home to get back half of our CPF. What is the logic in that? Is this bad planning or does the government not care? Finally, Corbyn Wan admitted in Parliament last week. He said, firstly, we control the construction programs. Secondly, we set the price for the flats. So finally, the government admits the truth. If the prices of HDB keeps going up, who are the ones who keep pushing them up? If Singaporeans cannot afford our homes, who are the ones who made it difficult for us to buy our homes? VAT! If Singaporeans cannot save enough in our CPF to retire because we do not have enough in our CPF, who was the one who made it impossible for us to retire? BAT! 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 物价多少也是他们控制的。那如果我们在公积金里拿不出钱，因为我们把我们的公积金还给物质了，那是政府的错还是我们的错？政府的错。In 1983, the Straits Times reported that the government borrows our CPF to give the HDB to build the flats. HDB can lend us the money at a high interest rate. To buy the flats. 
How come the government borrows our CPF? They earn from it by lending it back to us. A big joke, big joke. <laughs> the government also wants us to pay, pay an accrued interest. If you sell your flat, they say that because you borrow money from your CPF, they couldn't give you the 2.5% of it. Now, they want you to pay back the 2.5% that they couldn't give to you. Does this make sense? No! Oh. Big dollars! <laughs> now, the CPF is our money. But the way the government is treating it, is it still our money? Or is it the government's money? Now today, we know that we do not own our homes. The government keeps saying that Singaporeans, we own our homes. But we don't. We only lease it from the government. For the very first time this year again, because of a question by the Workers' Party, Jared Yang, the government admitted that our homes will have no value zero value by the end of the peace. Then our homes, still our homes. Kogunwa admitted last week, firstly, we control the construction price programs. Secondly, we set the price. Now Kogunwa also said, once the lease on our homes end, our HDB flats will go back to the HDB. Because HDB owns the land. Then we don't own our homes. <coughs> Why does the government still tell us that we own our home? Because Today, we know that it costs at most a hundred thousand dollars to build a flat. Then why does the government ask us to pay $300,000? What happened to the $200,000? If the land, if the land is owned by the government, then why do they need us to pay another $200,000? Now what is the purpose of public housing? Dr. Go King Sui has envisioned Public housing will be for the masses. Public housing, low-cost housing, which can provide a roof over our heads. Dr. Go King Sui, he wanted to give us a home. Now he wanted Singaporeans to have a home we can call our own. Dr. Go King Sui wanted us to live in a home we can be proud of, to live in a country we can be proud of. Dr. Go King Sui had a dream. But what happened to this dream? Now the old PAP has a vision for Singapore. They had a dream. They wanted to create a home for Singaporeans. Ko Jin Chai, S. Rajaratnam, Dr. Ko Go King Sui, they wanted a place that we could live in and be happy in. The old PAP was a responsible government that took care of the people. The old PAP is a responsible PAP. It's a responsible PAP. It's a responsible PAP. It's Hey,
Now the same, the same cannot be said for the PAP today. The PAP today is of course very happy sitting with their million dollar salaries. How will things ever be too expensive for them? But of course, they will never understand how it feels like to be poor, to be unemployed, also have to fear for your lives day in, day out. But I do. I lost my job. They fired me. Like many of you, like many of you, we support you, right? I fear. You are not here. You are not to us. Like many of you, I fear. Dragon flies here. The love is here. I feel whether there's a government which will have the integrity and dignity to take care of our lives, of all Singaporeans. When I lost my job, the government sent a press release to support my second. Which government in the world will send a press release to celebrate its own second of its own citizens? <laughs> Stop going to restaurants. 
even when you have to meet your friends there, you will eat something cheap outside before you meet them there. When you lie in bed at night, feeling the pain shoot right through you, but you endure the pain because you know you cannot afford to lose a few hundred dollars at the hospital. When you break your back cleaning the toilets and stand for hours in the heat, trying to remember the food orders for the customers, you realize how important it is, how every job has its value, how every of us has our value, has our dignity, and no matter what we do, we put in our passion. We are committed. If I'm a cleaner, I'm a CEO, I'm a teacher, I'm a bus driver, I'm a security guard, I do it because I believe in it. I believe in my job. Can the PAP understand this? No! They only understand money. Now will the PAP still have integrity? Can they have the integrity to pay us a minimum of $1,500 to $2,000 at least because we are of value? <coughs> Will the PAP have the honesty to increase health expenditure to 70% like all the other advanced countries do instead of the 30% now? Will the PAP have the justice to return our CPF to us after years of earning from our CPF. Now what we want are not grand stories of how the CPF rates are fair when they are the lowest in the world. Now what we want is not to know that the CPF minimum sum is good enough when 85% of us cannot retire on it. Now what we want is a PAP that will take care of us, that has the integrity, the honesty, and the justice to take care of the people. Because the pledge, we, the citizens of Singapore, pledge ourselves as well as the number of people. Please rise as we sing the national anthem.